Hey guys, Adrian here for the Digital Dojos, and here we're going to be starting a tutorial, a series of tutorials covering Sony Vegas and video editing in general with Sony Vegas. Now this does not span for only 9.0, this can go for 8.0, uh, etc. Usually I'm using 8.0, um, this is the, you can get a month trial, uh, like I have, you get a month trial of Vegas 9.0, this is free. Uh, nine uh, for Vegas Pro. So if you go over to Vegas, uh, the site, I'll leave a link in the description. You can download Vegas Pro for a month uh, for free again. Uh, basically, if you have to upgrade, like when I was going to upgrade from 8.0 to 9.0, it costs money. Uh, so you know, and it costs a lot of money to get in the first place. So I just decided to get the month trial, and uh, uh, you can reinstall it for a while. Uh, there's ways to work around the reinstall and stuff like that. But again, I'm not advocating anything like that. If you really enjoy software, obviously pay for it. Uh, and you know, some software obviously costs a lot. Uh, so, you know, save up or if you really, really enjoy using the, the whatever the software is. Anyways, um, back when my main channel, I started using vi doing videos covering Vegas and, you know, my ma the main ways around it and the interface, and it kind of just died off with that. So I thought I should bring that series back to life here in the Digital Dojos. Sony Vegas, if you guys don't know, it is a premium editor. Uh, kind of ranks up there with Premiere, uh, Final Cut, but uh, you see a lot of people use it because it's much of a more easier interface to use. The timeline is great. Everything has, you know, a very set, uh, noticeable interface from, you know, 8.0, 7.0, all the way up to 10.0, which is the latest version. Um, so, I just want to go through mainly how I have mine configured and the main stuff you'll see in an interface. So, if you go to view here, you have a lot of stuff here that's checked by default. Usually, you're going to see some other stuff that's going to be in here, like trimmer, uh, I'll put that in mixer and everything's kind of condensed because I'm recording in 1280 by 720 I don't have my windows maximized um, basically you'll see this kind of stuff here master this is for your audio your mixer if you want to see your audio levels etc trimmer is just basically a way a more advanced way to trim files but really it's never really used and I don't use it I use the default snipping and cutting so by default I'm going to recommend you guys turn that off really all you need is video preview explorer uh, project media etc and now uh, these transitions video effects and media generators now you can actually move stuff around if you want like i said like this doesn't have to be you know this can be wherever uh there's even a way i think it's under options or something if you want this uh bar you can actually have it at the top or bottom you know however you want to set that you can uh mess around with controls and preview devices and you can you know you can have it on a secondary display this doesn't have to be here you can move stuff around it's, it's very uh customizable like i said like if you don't want this bottom down here it can be up there uh, that's a little bit for other video when we do some advanced options. But uh, your main interface here in Vegas, you'll see, is you're going to have something called media generators. Media generators are uh, specific, you know, uh, sl or content that you can pull into your video to your timeline. Obviously, it's media that you can pull in uh, and to add on backgrounds and stuff like that. So checkerboard has some backgrounds. Uh, basically, this, when these uh, things meet in the background, this is a I mean just a transparent if you see those black and gray boxes so for example if I go to a color gradient elliptical ring will just be a ring with a color gradient so if I pull it down here and you can see I get options for it and I click over here it's basically my my in my case the transparency is just defaults to black um, now I can show you other effects like for example this elliptical transparent to black basically it would all feel black because my background is black but if I edited it edited it and uh, went into the uh, transparency here or uh, let's see here I can adjust this to be all black as you can see there I can adjust it to be a certain color within that transparent spot uh, like again you, you can do however you want like or, or you can like I said make it all filled in black however you want to do it uh, very customizable now your main things you'll probably be using in your min media generator is your uh, text uh, these are your basic texts and really your solid colors if you want to add some solid color effects in now, getting more advanced or stuff like the pro type titler, which is you know a whole other thing on its own. It's a way to make uh, like effect animations of titles. You may use credit roll if you do like any video type of stuff. But mainly the stuff I use: solid color and text. Uh, maybe sometimes some test patterns if you add some effects in there. Um, so basically, your main text you would just bring it down. You have your default text. Uh, you can you know type testing or whatever you want to do. So I'll type in digitaldojos.com. I can now adjust font right here, and you can, of course, you know, download fonts to your liking. Uh, this right here, the bar that they have under your, uh, sorry, I don't want to drop it in. The bar they have under your text in all windows, you'll always see this. This is what they call keyframing. This will be a whole other video on itself. Basically, you can keyframe text so that, you know, like five seconds in the video, 
the text starts moving to the right, it starts changing colors, whatever you want to do. And you also have some other tabs to mess around with, like placement, properties of color, effects. Like I said, you can outline it, and I do this a lot in my things. I always make it red, uh, and you can add feather to it to make it smoother, and you can add the you know the red lines to be bigger, however you want to do it. So that's your basic text, and again, you can add effects to that. Project media is just basically anything that you have media that's inserted in the project. So for example, if I was working on a vlog, or you know I needed a picture of a logo anything that would like for example if I just pulled on this logo from my desktop if I pulled in this appetizer logo uh, a show that I, I haven't done in a while actually I need to get back on that basically uh, any media that I use will be go and it will go in here so I can see everything that I have overviewed of my media explore this allows you to browse your file so for example this is all my move or these are all my webcam videos I've shot uh, and you can see there's a lot of them along with pictures so this basically just shows you your com it's like my computer you can explore to find files and drag them in or you can obviously just manually drag files in transitions this is another thing you'll be using a lot they have tons and tons of transitions and they can always be edited in a you know change in certain ways so like for example there's 3d fly in and out but let's say i want to add a transition between the text and the logo I can put it right here, but then you have way more options to configure to make the effect look different. So I can, you know, change this position, change that. Or, you know, these are all X and Y rotations. Uh, X and Y, basically like a grid or a graph if you ever mess with that. So basically, then we can go ahead and play this back here or go back here and just play it and you'll we'll see that whole effect goes off. Uh, and again, there's tons and tons of them. A lot of popular ones like uh, Zoom is a popular one, Cross Effect. Uh, you see 3D shuffle a lot in videos or flash. Uh, and you can get really creative with these. You can use transitions kind of as an effect and stuff like that. Obviously, you have your video effects, your main ones. So uh, I'm gonna go back into Media Generator and grab a solid color like blue. Let's just use blue. And we'll go to Video Effects, and you can add certain video effects. Like I said, you can add noise. Um, and if you add multiple video effects, what happens here? So let's say I add a chroma key here. So let's say I have a blue screen here and I want to add a chroma key. So you can see how the blue screen goes away. Now let's say I don't want that noise. Multiple effects will be added up here in the top of your window. You can just turn them off to your liking. Uh, you know, again, you can add glow. Uh, and with everything, like I said, you can keyframe certain items. So the glow can kind of move across your screen or wherever you want it. So the intensity is kind of high there. So I'm going to dim it down. The glow, and I'm going to suppress it. Again, there's tons and tons of effects you can mess around with. Other than that, guys, you have your timeline down here, which is pretty basic. You can use a scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can edit your video effects right here. You can edit event pan crop. Um, now, this is for actually changing the, the crop in your video. So, for example, whatever is in this square right here is what's going to be shown in the video. Uh, so, if I zoomed out, basically, you can see here that everything that's within here, everything's going to shrink the more I zoom out because that blue box is becoming smaller. In relativity, if I moved right in the corner, it'll be right here in the corner. Now, let's say I took another clip and I overlaid it. So, let's say I took black and I put it in another timeline along that, alongside of it. Actually, I don't want to make it black because black is just going to measure the background. Let's say I put a green clip right here. You can see green will now show up like that because it's in the overlaying background. But if I event pan crop that, I can do the same thing I did to the blue one. Zoom it down and put it in the bottom right corner. And then let's say, you know, finally I want a white backdrop. I'm going to add another white layer and see on top. Now it's on top, so it's going to suppress everything else. It's going to be uh, dominating everything else. So I want to put it on bottom, and now I'll get a, kind of like a squared off effect. And again, you can mess with this in Vent Pan Crop. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can try, you know, make them different uh, rotations. You can zoom in, zoom out. Again, in this creative, you can be done with video or still pictures, whatever you want to do. Um, your timeline, you can right click here to add insert video track or audio track. You can duplicate tracks, etc. You can mess with the opacity of tracks, opa you know, uh, make it transparent. You can mess with the volume levels, stuff like that. This is opacity right here, but you can mess with the volume levels if it has audio uh, and stuff like that. You can record directly to your uh, track. You can go back and loop playback if you want to like watch something over and over, play from the start, and your basic play pause, etc. Um, this slider right here just adjusts for rewind and fast forward, um, or you can manually just click. Uh, and you'll learn keyboard shortcuts along the way, like S to cut or uh, C to make command properties and stuff like that. Um, other than that, you'll manually use your file right here for rendering, uh, saving as, and stuff like that. Rendering, you're going to have templates, but we'll talk a little bit about templates in the next video. So, guys, this is your gist of uh, Sony Vegas. Uh, really, your main 
properties right here is something else you're going to want to learn how to do. Again, we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, but this is your main interface. Uh, really, other than that, you can have you have buttons up here to guide you. Some advanced buttons like snapping, enable snapping for uh, when you put uh, clips down. Auto ripple is something I use a lot. So, for example, if I move one of these right here, you see how it only takes that one specific clip. Let's say I want to. I have a lot of clips. I have 20 clips, and I want all of it to move to the right instead of you know, so it doesn't mess up the whole video. I can take that and I can move everything to the right with auto ripple on. So guys, that is a uh, basic, basic look at uh, Sony Vegas. There's so much more that can be done, and we're only touching the surface, guys. So we're going on 10 minutes here. If you guys made it this far, um, you know, uh, I don't know, comment below DD for Digital Dojos. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys will uh, try out Vegas, you know, whether you purchase it, buy it, uh, you know, purchase it, or the same thing, <laughs> purchase it, uh, get the trial, uh, or whenever, you know, I'm not advocating anything. Um, you know, uh, I hope you guys check it out and I hope you guys will learn from these tutorials more to come guys Thanks for watching more content over at digitaldojos.com till next time guys uh, Don't forget to comment like the video and subscribe